Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Tacky Tuesday. If you haven't already seen a Tacky Tuesday or subscribed to my channel, I definitely encourage you to go back and watch them because I go over short EMS cardiology lessons, and today we're going to be talking all about hyperkalemia. First, let's talk about what hyperkalemia is. Hyperkalemia is a term that refers to higher than normal levels of potassium in the blood. This common condition can occur for a multitude of reasons. Although hyperkalemia is confirmed through blood work and labs in the hospital, this electrolyte imbalance can also manifest on an EKG or a 12 lead. Depending on the severity of the imbalance, the patient can experience very serious symptoms, even cardiac arrest. Let's talk about some of the characteristics of hyperkalemia on a 12 lead. With the rhythm, it varies. Depending on the severity, AV blocks can develop, bundle branch blocks can develop, and with some of the most severe cases of hyperkalemia, a sine wave can form, which I will show you an example of that in a little while. And ultimately, it can turn into V-fib and the patient can unfortunately pass away. When we are looking at more severe cases of hyperkalemia, the rate becomes bradycardic. Depending on the severity, once again, your P wave can flatten out or it can disappear completely. The P PR interval, depending on the severity, it could be prolonged or it may disappear because the P wave disappears. And depending on the severity, the QRS complex can get extremely wide, especially once that P wave disappears. It can become very wide and ultimately turn into that sine wave that I was just speaking about. The T wave. T wave is probably what hyperkalemia is known for the most. Your T waves become tall and peaked. Something else that I didn't put on here that could happen with hyperkalemia is ST depression, but definitely T wave is one of your most well-known markers of hyperkalemia on an EKG. And just a little bit more information on hyperkalemia. There are multiple conditions that can cause it, like kidney failure, trauma, burns, crush syndrome, compartment syndrome, prolonged periods of time without dialysis. We see this a lot in the pre-hospital setting. Many of our dialysis patients will skip appointments and then not be in good shape because they miss their dialysis appointment and they become hyperkalemic. Hormonal disorders like Addison's disease and certain medications can cause hyperkalemia. In the 911 EMS, setting, providers are typically unable to treat hyperkalemia because in-hospital lab work and testing is needed. There are, however, conditions that may cause hyperkalemia out in the field that we can treat like cardiac arrest, crush and compartment syndrome, diabetic ketoacidosis, sepsis, dehydration, etc. I'm going to go into the signs and symptoms. I do want to let you guys know that I made an entire video over a mnemonic that will actually help you memorize the signs and symptoms of hyperkalemia. I'm going to link it up in the right hand corner right now. Some of your signs and symptoms are muscle cramps, weakness, urination abnormalities, shortness of breath, chest pain, hyperreflexia, areflexia, EKG abnormalities, and cardiac arrest. The causes and risk factors, I kind of already went over this in the characteristics, but kidney disease, kidney failure can cause hyperkalemia. We are going to look at a few 12 leads and for each of the 12 leads I'm going to explain to you what the patient was actually experiencing. Trauma, examples are burns, crush syndrome, compartment syndrome, rhabdo, things like that, prolonged period of time without dialysis, hormonal disorders, examples are Addison's disease, your medications, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, etc. They can cause hyperkalemia. Cardiac arrest, specifically long downtime, diabetic ketoacidosis, sepsis and severe infections, dehydration, and excessive use of potassium supplements. It's not the most common cause, but it can happen. So let's take a look at a few strips and talk about what's going on on with these patients. Taking a look at this one, you can definitely see that the T waves are peaking in V2, V3, V4. With this patient, he was a middle-aged man experiencing diabetic ketoacidosis. He did have a blood sugar of 460, uncontrolled diabetes. He had type 1 diabetes and hadn't been taking his insulin. And I believe his potassium level came back as 5.8. And this patient, he had experienced cardiac arrest. He was a dialysis patient. This is the rhythm that I got once we got raw. You'll notice that there are peak T waves. I don't know if that was due to the downtime. I don't know if he had missed dialysis prior to arresting. And you can actually see that the P waves had disappeared. There is that little part where I actually drew on a P wave. I think I was talking to somebody and saying that that's where the normally the P wave would be. But the P waves had disappeared and the T waves had peaked. So let's take a look at the sine wave. This sine wave is something that you can see in severe hyperkalemia. I have personally never seen it on the field. This is typically 
typically the more fatal rhythm because after this usually ventricular fibrillation occurs and then unfortunately asystole. So this is what the sine wave looks like. And some of the possible EMS treatments that we have for hyperkalemia, this is specifically going to be in the 911 EMS setting. A 12 lead and vitals. A 12 lead is probably how we are going to figure out that they may have hyperkalemia going on, but unfortunately we don't have access to the labs. We can gain IV access, get a blood draw if you guys do that for your hospital. We can administer oxygen and IV fluid. IV fluid would be our treatment in the case of hyperkalemia due to DKA or dehydration or sepsis. Now obviously this is patient dependent if a patient is in DKA and they're also in renal failure and a dialysis patient you probably don't want to overload them with fluids. Unfortunately we don't have access to insulin out in the field so our only real treatment for DKA is the solution to pollution is dilution. Another treatment that we have is sodium bicarb and this is in the case of cardiac arrest or crush syndrome, compartment syndrome. In the hospital they have treatments like insulin, calcium, even albuterol that they can give for high potassium but unfortunately we just cannot give that out in the 911 setting. And the next thing always treat your patient's complaint. Talk to your patient what's going on with them and treat that accordingly. Next you want to report and transmit any findings to the hospital and search for underlying causes. Ask them questions and see if you can find any cause for your suspicion of hyperkalemia and get a good medical history. And that's about all I have for hyperkalemia. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye!